Alright, this is uh, going to be the start of the release videos for the Rotodyne. I'm um, just going to go through uh, as much as I can just to get everybody uh, up and started. I'll do some more tutorials um, when I have some time. Uh, this is my um, version of the fer Fairy Rotodyne. Um, it's based off the uh, 1950s uh, Rotodyne. I've kind of made some of my own changes and um, you know made it a little bit more um, useful in Stormworks. So let's do a quick walk around. So um, the real Rotodyne, um, the rotors were used tip jets to turn and then uh, when it in the air it just flew like a turboprop uh, gyrocopter. This one is shaft drive so it functions more like a regular helicopter both to work better in storm arcs but to uh, you know that was one of the downfalls of the Rotodyne was it was just too loud using that system so this used a more conventional system. So um, first thing we'll do is we'll come over here to the uh, port um, engine nacelle and you'll see a uh, button here, or a switch, uh, it says service hatch. If we click that, that opens up our service hatch. Um, light will come on. We have a welder in there for repairs. Um, this is your service panel, so you can connect your fluid hose anchor. Uh, this will fill both tanks, both your um, fuselage fuel and your wing fuel. Um, if you uh, connect the hose and then turn on this pump, um, you'll be able to pump fuel into the system. If you connect um, a, an electrical cable here, this is your, your ground power. Um, if you flick this switch, that will enable ground power to power the system. Um, we can go ahead and we can shut this. Uh, we'll come back to the rear here. If we uh, press this toggle, we'll be able to open the clamshell doors. Uh, this would be, um, you know, there was also cargo variants of this where you could load into the rear um, and then for the passenger version for RP, you could load cargo into the uh, clamshells. So we'll go ahead and close this. Uh, this door is disabled when, uh, once you're up at altitude, so you can't open that in flight. Still have some things to delete there. Um, there's nothing on this nacelle. If we come over to um, this uh, starboard side here, this is our APU door. So if we crouch down, you look, you'll see a uh, APU door switch on the gear door for the nose wheel. If we click that, it will open up our APU. We have a diesel APU in here. Um, if we plug a fluid hose anchor into here, we can refill the diesel. So this is our, uh, our uh, diesel APU for um, giving us power while starting. Go ahead and close that. All right, we'll go ahead and get in. Uh, I'm trying to make this as quick as possible and just go through the startup stuff. So we have air stairs there, so there's a toggle button. You can go ahead and climb in. Uh, this is set up for Stormlink. There are 48 seats, as you can see, they're numbered. So you can utilize this in Stormlink. So this is actually a pretty good money maker in Stormlinks. Uh, we have a first aid kit here. Go ahead and we'll jump in the pilot seat. So the first thing we, um, you can only fly from the pilot seat. So um, I was a commercial airline pilot, so I've set this panel up um, how, they, how a real system would be set up. So um, this whole section here is going to be your electrics. This section here is going to be your engines. And this section here is your fuel. Um, above here, this is your gear and brakes. And then this section here is all your function buttons for your modules. So if we look outside, you'll see some hard points there. Um, I'm going to be including a bunch of modules. One is going to be the container handling module. Um, and all you have to do is uh, paste that in and it will snap to those uh, hard link controls and it will be all set to go. There's also a winch module, a firefighting module, and you can use a Bambi bucket for firefighting with the winch module. Alright, so we'll go ahead and go back inside. Um, we want to turn on our avionics master, our master power. We want to come across starboard battery, port battery, port generator, starboard generator, we want to select our ground idle, and we want to come up. And we want to turn on our APU. From there, we want to turn on our beacon. You always want to, you know, in real life, you want to put your beacon on before you start your engines. Next, we want to select our port starbin, port turbine start stop button, which will, um, as long as that's lit, it will uh, start and auto start the uh, auto restart the turbine. Once that's lit off, as you can hear it lit off, we can select the starboard turbine, and now we're all set to go. All right, so it's going to take a second for the um, rotors and the props to start up. That allows the turbines to start. Um, 
more quickly. Uh, what ground idle mode does is it limits the turbine RPM. So, for example, I can go full up collective right now and it will not take off. Alright, so that's uh, designed to one, burn less fuel, but also to, um, to prohibit you from taking off when you're not ready. So we'll go ahead and we'll release the parking brake up here in our gear uh, brake section, in our gear section. As you notice, when the parking brake's on, it will show 100% brake. When we uh, release the parking brake, it will go to zero. So we're going to go ahead and we'll use the one and two keys to um, control our prop pitch. So I just uh, pressed one, and now we're tacking forward. We can use our left-right arrows, as you can see, it will steer the nose wheel. All right, so from there, if we select the autopilot master, just this button, that will give us gyro, and it will also enable our autopilot to go. So I'm going to go ahead and click that on. I'm going to continue to steer with our left right. That is also our yaw. Our yaw on this is controlled by differential prop pitch. And if we press the down arrow key, or down collective, as you can see, it's actuating the brakes. So we can manually brake. So we can steer with left, right, and we can brake with down. If we let go, as you can see, the brake pressure goes up. So we'll go ahead and uh, put the parking brake on. All right, so we'll go ahead and we'll get set up for flights. We'll go nav lights, strobes. Um, we can put logo lights on if it's night, cabin and cockpit if it's night, and then we'll do landing and takeoff for takeoff. All right, so we're going to go ahead and we'll remove our ground idle. As you can see, that's going to allow our turbines to spool up. All right, once our turbines are spooled up, we can take off. So all we're going to do is do some up collective. And as you can see, it comes on. All right, so now uh, there is a little bit of drift, as you can see, in the yaw. Uh, my hands are off. That's uh, just torque, which is fine. So all you have to do is if you want add a little bit of trim in there as you can see that will stop that the other thing you can do is if you want to put in a heading hold you can uh, use the autopilot to heading hold but we'll get into that in a minute all right so uh, now that we're off the ground we can raise our gear selector as you can see we have three green lights that's the nose wheel down and locked that's the uh, port main down and locked starboard main down and locked when I flip the switch you'll notice we get a an amber that is the mains in transit We'll also get an amber on this side. That's the nose wheel in transit. So you'll see that these aren't that these uh, stay on different intervals. That's because it's uh, actually using the real travel time of the gear. So I'm going to go ahead and put in a uh, I'll put it in a heading and an altitude hold here. So let's go to our altitude hold. So as long as this autopilot master is on, um, if there's a zero in here, it disables the each mode. So to put an altitude in, we'll put 500 in. And as soon as we check that because the AP master is on and the number is greater than zero, as you can see, it's going to take us to 500 feet. We'll also put in a heading hold here. Uh, we'll do 190. 190, as soon as I click that, it will hold 190. Alright, so we're going to go up to that. Um, Alright, so now that we've, uh, we're have we taking off, we're above 50 feet, we're going to go ahead and we'll raise our gear selector. As you can see, we get an amber, amber, and now as you can see, we have three reds, which means they are up um, in the stowed position. So let's uh, look outside again. We'll put them back down. As you can see, gear come down and lock. All right, so let's watch them transit. As you can see, um, one of the ambers, that nose wheel amber, stays on longer. That's because the nose wheel takes longer to transit. All right, so now that our gear are up and stowed, we can shut off our taxi light, which is in our well and our landing light. All right, so uh, transition to uh, horizontal flight is pretty simple. We can do it a couple ways. One, we can fly like a helicopter. We can just pitch forward. And as you can see, we'll start to gain some speed. Um, but this isn't the primary mode of flight. Primary mode of flight is you can use the one and two keys to control your prop pitch. And this will uh, allow you to uh, maintain a level deck angle and fly. So we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to hold the one key. I'm going to go to 35%. 35% is going to be my best speed. This is going to be, give me the fastest speed. All right. So at 35%, as you can see, we're doing 175 knots. So we can control the speed with our uh, prop pitch. So uh, this is going to be our fastest speed. So if we want to slow down, we can do it one of two ways. We can increase the prop, which is going to make a, uh, we'll burn less fuel and go slower, or we can decrease the prop. And we'll still burn more fuel, but we can reduce speed. 
All right, I'll go to more depth of you know actual uh, prop settings there. All right, so let's quickly go through the panel. So this is our, like I said, this is our electrical section. So we have starboard and port batteries. Let me actually shut off um, infinite electricity. I left that on. So starboard and port batteries. We can actually, um, I should have shut this off already, but um, often this is how we do it in the airlines, is you'd either wait until your engines are started or you'd wait until you're in the air, and then you shut off your APU. So your APU shows how much fuel you have. We started with, I believe, 19.8 gallons. Um, how much uh, our generator is outputting. Uh, if we have low fuel, that will flash red, and then if we press the start-stop, that will shut off our APU. All right, so we have our batteries here, starboard port. We have our, uh, we can select one battery bank or the other. So for example, as you can see, we're draining both batteries. We can pull that, and we're not draining any more out of this battery, just this one. So I like to usually keep them on both. Uh, we have both generators on, which allows the generators to charge the batteries. Above that, we have the delta. As you can see, we're showing a uh, we're losing charge, which I just need to change the pit a little bit. Over here, we have our engines. So this uh, it's kind of like an L shape. We have our ITT, which is inlet turbine temperature. So I've simulated that. We have our start stops for our turbines. So if we shut those off, that would allow us to shut the engines down. We have our port turbine RPM, our starboard turbine RPM, master power, avionics power. We have max available power, which we'll go into in a second. We already went over ground idle, which limits our RPM. We have rotor torque, and we have rotor RPM. So that's the current torque and RPM of the rotor. So uh, we can actually go faster than this. So if we're at 35, which is our be best speed pitch, we can click max available RPM, and that removes the limiter and allows our uh, turbines to go up to about uh, between 1,500 and 1,600 RPM. So as you can see, now we're doing uh, over 210 knots. All right. So now we're at max speed. All right, so now let's go through the fuel section. This whole section here is fuel. So we have wing fuel. That's how much fuel is in our wings. We have our fuselage fuel, which shows how much fuel is in the belly of the fuselage. And then this is the total. So it's just adding wing and fuselage to give you a total. As you can see here, we have our gallons per hour. We're burning 5,800 gallons per hour, almost 5,900 gallons per hour. We have our uh, max range. This is how many nautical miles we can go with our current fuel and our current power settings. So you can see just um, over 300 nautical miles. And we have our fuel time to empty in minutes. So that's 86 minutes. So that's um, going to be an hour and 26 minutes of fuel on board. All right, if we go below 100 gallons, We'll get a flashing low fuel light, and uh, the fuel pump should come on. I have to fix that. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and we'll go in. We'll look at our, our autopilot stuff really quick. We've already talked about it. Um, AP master has to be on for the autopilot modes to work. If you just select AP master, that enables a gyro. So if you remove AP master, it will uh, disable all autopilot systems and the gyro. If we wanted to disable a single mode, as you can see, altitude hold, enter zero to disable. We just have to enter a zero in there and a zero in there to, to disable heading. So if we didn't want altitude hold, but we wanted to maintain heading hold, we just put a zero in there. Last one here is going to be our waypoint. So I'm using an old ADF style uh, navigation system. So let's go ahead and I'm going to uh, put a waypoint back where we were so we can return. So I'm going to set waypoint. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to input the waypoint. And if you notice on this panel here, we have, this is ADF direction of waypoint. As you see, the needle's pointing straight behind us, which makes sense because the waypoint's straight behind us. We have time to waypoint. As you see, it's negative and climbing because we're flying away from it. And the nautical miles to waypoint is increasing because we're flying away from it. Next, we have our digital readout here. It shows us what heading we have to turn to to go to the waypoint. And then we'll have a flashing proximity light that if we're within five nautical miles of the waypoint that we've inputted, this will flash. So we're going to see this number is 010. So all we're going to do to fly to the waypoint is enter 010 in the heading hold, or we can do it manually. All right, so as you can see, the autopilot's going to turn us. I'm actually going to, um, I will remove 3D waypoints as though you were in a career save. So this is set up to operate um, well in a career environment. So, um, you know, you can uh, use, utilize this navigation system um, 
you know, without having to uh, kind of cheat and look outside. All right, so we rolled out on 010, and as you can see, the number changed to 013, and that makes sense if you're thinking, you know, when we're flying straight away from this point, we're more over here, so that was 0102. Well, we made a, a U-turn, so now we need to turn a little bit more to the east to get there. So once we've rolled out on that heading, we can put in the new heading. So all we do is put in 13, enter, and now as you can see, we're, we're more accurately flying to the waypoint. So as you can see, now the uh, needle is pointing directly at the waypoint. Our time to the waypoint is decreasing and our nautical miles to waypoint is decreasing. So this is our navigation system. As soon as we get within 0.5 nautical miles of this, this will flash and that will tell us that we're about to arrive and we can slow down. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is uh, we'll go through some of these prop settings. So in real life, um, you know, this is a, uh, a complex aircraft. That's the terminology for it. So your prop is um, what you're mainly utilizing for speed and for um, you know your condition of fuel burn. So uh, it's no different than in this situation here. So our we only have three turbine speeds essentially. We have ground idle, we have standard, which if I didn't have max available RPM on, that would be flight idle, and then we have max available RPM. So this is allowing us to have the most, and this is going to be a big impact on fuel. So as you can see, we're burning 5,800 gallons per hour. That's a lot of fuel. It gives us a range of 296 miles uh, nautical miles. So I can save some fuel by removing that max available RPM, which all that does is limit my turbines to 1,200. And you can see now we're only burning about 3,600 um, gallons per hour. That's increased our range, and that's increased our fuel time. The uh, main way we'll, um, we'll fly more efficiently is we'll increase our prop to 100%. So 100% is our best efficiency. Now as we increase the prop pitch, this is putting more load on the turbines, which is going to cause the turbines to have to spin slower. They just can't, you know, spin fast enough to keep those props turning. Well, as our RPM goes down, our fuel efficiency goes up. So we're actually doing more work with our props being at a high angle of pitch and our turbines have slowed down so we're burning less fuel so if we look we've gone from we were going about 212 at max at when we had max available rpm and 35 percent prop uh, it was 174 without max available rpm and it was about so that was 5800 um, gallons per hour at max speed without this on that was 3600 now you can see we're down to 2200 so now we're burning a lot less fuel we have 573 nautical miles of range, and we have a time to empty of 217 minutes. So, you know, we're talking just under uh, three hours of fuel. All right, so we have slowed. We're down to 160, what's that, 168 knots. So we're going slower, but we're burning a lot less fuel. So we are burning less than half the amount of fuel we are burning when we're going 212 knots, but we're not going, you know, half the speed. So. This max efficiency setting of 100% prop will make it so that we, uh, so that we're burning a lot less fuel and we're still going nice and fast. So, 160 knots in Stormworks is really fast. You know, this uh, these distances are really short. So, from like here to here is 45 miles. So, even 160 knots, that's screaming. All right, so let's look down at our navigation system. As you see, still showing 013. We're still heading 13. So, we're heading right to um, where we're going. And uh, if we look, we're 1.8 minutes away and we're uh, 4.6 nautical miles away. So one thing I'm gonna do here is, let's go to night. I can showcase the lights, but I can also uh, show you some instrument, an instrument approach here. And we'll make the fog about 60%. All right, so now as you can see, we have to use our instruments. We can't really see anything. All right, so let's go ahead and put some lights on too. So let's start with the cockpit lights. You can see we have some red lights for the cockpit. Turn our cabin lights, which just turns on the cabin lights for our uh, passengers. We can also turn on the logo lights. So if we look, the logo lights will light up the road at nine. All right, so we are one minute away. All right, so now we will not, you know, we might see the lights of the airport even with this fog on, but we're going to use this as an instrument approach. So 
we're gonna come in like this. I'm actually gonna uh, lower, uh, reduce my altitude to 250 feet. All right, so it's showing 012 now. So I'm just gonna change. Nope, I'm just gonna change my heading hold to 012. All right, needle still pointing straight ahead. That's good. We are half a minute, so 30 seconds away, and we're uh, 1.2 nautical miles away. So I'm going to start to uh, get ready to um, slow down here. So I'm going to start slowing down. So I'm going to bring my prop back. Now, as you remember, this will actually speed me up initially. And then I go under 35%, and that will slow me down. So now I'm approaching at about 120 knots. I'm just going to use my prop to uh, maintain speed. And as you see, we get the flashing green light. So we are point, uh, as you see, we're uh, we were less than half a mile. I'm just going to continue to reduce my prop all the way to zero. And as you see, our speed bleeds off and we come to a hover. So, as you remember, our light flashed, telling us we're within 0.5. And all I did was I pushed two to bring the prop all the way back and we stopped and now we're in a hover. And if we look outside, we are right over the airport that we started at. We're right where our waypoint is. So using this simple ADF navigation system, you can uh, navigate and complete um, IMC instrument conditions. So some other things to notice. As when you're passing the station, this needle will flip that will tell you you've passed. This light will flash to remind you you're getting close. The time to the waypoint will go from positive to negative if you were to fly past it, and the nautical mile will start to increase again. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and we will uh, We'll take off the night and the fog so that we can uh, do a regular landing. All right, so now, as you can see, we're just easily hovering over the airport, so we're just going to do a manual landing. So I'm going to take off some of these autopilot modes, but I'm going to keep my gyro on, so I'm going to put a zero in the altitude hold. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put a zero in the heading hold. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, I'll trim my, uh, my yaw a little bit. All right, I'm going to put down the gear. So again, gear down, we get our transit. We get our locked. Now we have three green. So that means our three landing gear are down and locked. All right, so I'm just going to use left, right for my uh, for my yaw. I'm going to use my W for pitch. I'm going to use my up, down for collective. And I'm just going to come and I'm going to land right on the runway. And then we'll taxi back in and we'll do a shutdown procedure. All right, so very simple, very easy controls on this. All right, we'll even try to get it right in the center line. All right, so nice touchdown. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to ground idle mode. All that's going to do again is it's going to reduce our turbine RPM to around 500 RPM. That's going to burn a lot less fuel, but now we cannot take off the ground. So if I was to go full collective up, which I am, as you can see, we're not taking off. So that will stick you to the uh, ground. So if you were going to go do some need to get out or whatever that will keep you on the ground all right so next thing to do brake pressure is on so I'm gonna go ahead and release the parking brake and I'm just gonna slowly press one and as you can see that will get us taxiing forward and just like before we can uh, use the nose wheel to steer us all right so again just use uh, the one key to increase the props we can also pitch with the W and use our rotors but it's it's better just to use a little bit of prop pitch to uh, taxi. All right, so we're just going to steer with left, right. And uh, if we need some brakes, we can tap, as you can see, the brake indicator is moving. We can tap the, um, the down uh, arrow key, and that will uh, apply brakes for us. So we're just going to go ahead and I'll taxi in, and we'll do a shutdown. All right, so just controlling my speed with the one and two keys on the keyboard, and that will move my props. Got them all the way back here, so we're coasting, and I'm just going to gently tap my uh, down arrow, and that applies the brakes. So we'll go ahead and we'll put a parking brake on. All right, and we'll go ahead and we'll go through our lights here. All right, so we'll do a shutdown. So after we land, we can shut down the lights we don't need. So we don't need, you know, we wouldn't need those. We don't need strobes. We don't need nabs. We'll leave the beacon on until the engines are off. Go ahead and shut off the logo lights, seeing it's day, cabin lights, and cockpit because it's day. All right, so let's go through a shutdown procedure. So shutdown's pretty simple. So first thing we're going to do is if we want, if, you know, if you're going to go pick up a container and you want to maintain some power, you can turn on the APU. 
If not, you can uh, just do a shutdown. So we'll do a standard shutdown. So we're going to start with by shutting down both start, uh, turbine start stops. And as you can hear, they're uh, starting to shut down. Turbine RPM is going down, and our rotor RPM is going down. Next thing we can do is we can disable our generators. We can shut off both batteries. We can shut off our avionics master and we can shut off our master power. We can disable our ground idle. Alright, so we are completely shut down now. We can go ahead and we can jump out. Got a little bit of phantom forces here, I think. Yeah, that's actually the first time I've had that problem, so. I'll go ahead and jump out and see if that's Phantom Forces. I assume it is. That's literally the first time I've had that problem. I'll have to see what that is. Alright, so uh, thank you for watching.